Hello and welcome to episode 21 of the PS Pod. I'm Jeremy Schuback. In this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to add a person into this image. Uh, in the last tutorial, I showed you how to take a guy out, so it only seems fair to add a guy in. Um, one more fix that I want to do before adding this uh, person into here is I'm noticing uh, she's kind of distracting over here as well. So I'm not going to take her out just because we really don't have the information to paint in the background right there. Uh, and instead, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to darken her and blur her. So I'm going to go to the uh, lasso tool. Let's go to the magnetic lasso tool, actually. And I'm just going to hit tab to get rid of all of these pesky windows. And just uh, clicking and just trying to grab this edge. So just going along. It looks like it's a fairly clean edge between where one person starts and the other person ends. So this shouldn't be too bad. Uh, remember, whenever you're using the lasso tool, you can always press space to you can you can press and hold down space to move the image plane. So you'll notice I'm just hitting space and moving the image plane right there, and that's uh, an important feature that some people don't know about. Uh, looks like there's a little problem with the leaf right there. Very similar color in the foreground and the background, uh, but overall, that's pretty good. All right, so I'm just going to click click and then just double click to close it up. Um, gonna, let's get those tools back. I'm going to go to the polygonal lasso tool and zoom out a little bit with control minus and add to the selection by hitting shift and then using this tool. Again, all this should be old hat by now. You've been with me for many, many a sessions at this point. All right, just add to this. We good. All right, that looks it looks pretty good. Doesn't need to be perfect. Uh, let me just zoom in a little bit more to make sure this is fine. Uh, let's just fix this little finger problem right here, and then refine the edge. Always a good last step. Um, let's blur it a little bit, feather it. Okay, that's fine. All right, we're going to. I could duplicate this layer out, just control C, control V, like I did for past layers, and then darken it. So image adjustment, uh, hue saturation, bring down the lightness. Uh, this is the effect that we're going for right here. So I could do that, but I've already shown you that a number of times, and you don't need to see me do it that way uh, again. So I am going to go back a couple of, of times. There we go. Uh, let's go to Refine Edge, actually. And instead of doing it that way, I'm going to just create an adjustment layer and put the adjustment layer on Hue Saturation. And what I want you to notice is that when I created a new adjustment layer and I had a selection, it took that selection and put it into the adjustment layer. So this adjustment layer will only be affecting what was selected because only the white area is affected. All right, so I'm going to bring down the lightness, and I'm going to, well, I'm not going to bring down the saturation, just going to bring down the lightness right there. All right, so what's really nice about this is now we can use a brush, just as we had done earlier, to go uh, in and make little adjustments on this. So because what we're looking at is, is this, we have the selection right there in this adjustment layer. If there's any places where there's a little bit of a mistake, and I didn't actually try to make any mistakes, as sometimes I will for demonstration's sake. Uh, let's say the hair. The hair looks a little weird right here. Uh, if you go in with the brush, let's decrease the size of it, and you have, all right, you make sure you have a white tip. So I'm just going to switch the foreground and background color, that little icon right there. Uh, you can just brush and uh, more of it will be affected. So all we did right there was we brushed into this. So. So there we go. Or if we were to switch it. No, no I don't want to do that. So I'm going to switch these one more time. All right, there we go. So that's actually a really good feature right there. Instead of duplicating out the layer, uh, just creating a color, just making a selection and then making a color adjustment layer. Uh, and then you have this thing called a mask that you can go back and forth with. And if that was confusing for you, you know, just keep duplicating out layers. 
um, not a big deal. I will talk about masks uh, in much greater detail uh, in future sessions. All right, so I'm going to increase the size of the brush. I'm going to make sure that it has a small hardness, and I'm going to make a little bit of a bigger fade right here. So instead of it having this hard line, I'm just hitting Alt and clicking this. It's for demonstration's sake. It's not really important when using the program. And I am going to make it so instead of this hard line, it has a fade right here. So I'm going to actually make it an even more of a fade than that. There we go. I'm going to make it like that. And what this is accomplishing is that it now fades from one to the other. So instead of having a very rough edge like that, it fades like that. <coughs> Excuse me. If this was just a layer, I'd be using the eraser tool and just be using a soft edge on the eraser tool to accomplish the same goal. All right, so she's taken a bit out of the image. I also want to blur that section as well. And for that, I am going to just copy that and create it on a new layer. So I'm going to press Control and then click this mask, and that gives me the selection. Just as I did that with the outline of a layer, creates the, uh, gets the outline of where the layer is. Control and clicking on the icon in the layers palette. If you control and click on the mask, it gets the outline of the mask. So I can go into this. I can press Control C, Control V. It copies out this layer. I'm going to blur it. Filter, blur, Gaussian blur. Like I said, I use this more than any other filter. Uh, then all the other filters combined. And I'm just going to blur her so she goes into the background right there. So is she gone? No. But she is definitely out of the picture. And it looks like I blurred a little bit of this girl's hair as well accidentally. So I'm just going to go to Eraser, E for Eraser, and erase this out. All right. There we go. And so there, she's out of the picture. There's a little bit of a weird edge right there. Uh, and that's just a matter of getting a slightly better selection. Uh, if I really wanted, I could use the stamp tool right now. I could create a new layer. You'll notice right now the layers are getting a little crazy. There's a lot of layers right now. We'll solve that by just combining a bunch of them. And I can just use the stamp tool to copy from this part so we don't see that strange colored line right there. And if I wanted, I could lower the opacity of it just so it's not such a, you know, this is dark, this is light area. And turn this layer on and off. Um, that make things better or worse? Hmm. Yeah, I think it made things a little bit better. I'm going to keep it. Uh, the one area down here looks a little weird, so I'm going to go in with the eraser, erase it out a little bit. And you can see I'm just uh, playing around with uh, using all of these tools together to get the job done. All right. So what we have right here is, is this. All right, last step, I'm going to add a different person into this image. So in order to do that, first I need to take a picture of a different person. I'm going to use this image for two reasons. One, it is a completely different color from this image, and trying to get them to match will be quite a problem. And two, it's a really lousy image that will never be made perfect. And I'm using this to demonstrate that while you can combine many images, some images are just not meant to be combined. However, we will take this as far as it is able to go, and it will get pretty darn close. All right, so that is going to wait until next session. I'm going to close this session up uh, here. I'm going to keep it a small session and, you know, give you something to look forward to next time. Until then, this has been the PS Pond with Jeremy Shuvak. Thanks for listening.